very excited to introduce our guest this week. Uh, I've known her for quite some time over Twitter and the internet, but we have Steffi Smalls with us right now to talk a little preview. Hi, Steffi. How are you? I don't think I don't hear her. You may be muted. We'll let her uh, tackle that for a moment. But, oh, you hear me now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. I was saying I uh, wish it was on happier terms, but I appreciate you guys having me on. Of course. Of course. No We're problem. always happy to have you. Super stoked. Yeah. Super stoked. So, Sam, I mean, we got to talk as a trio now about this upcoming week against Washington and um, there's going to be a lot to look forward to and hopefully things turn around in week two. Yeah, absolutely. So Steffi, before we get into uh, talking about the commanders a bit, you know, we were just talking about Daniel Jones. I have a Tommy DeVito shirt on today. I see. (laughs) Give me your thoughts on how you're feeling about this quarterback situation. Yeah, his time's done. Um, And I think like for a lot of us, it's just, I mean, I think this is the first time I saw Giants Twitter at one point, like get along for more than like five minutes, which was kind of nice to see. I think it's at the point where this kid has no confidence left. Like the things that he did do well, he's not doing. You gave him the O-line now that looks, it, it looked fine. Like it looked good for what we've seen over the last couple of years. You get him the wide receiver one, you get him this, you get him that. Um, you can start talking about play calling, whatever you want. But uh, yeah, I think it's time. It, it, it's done. I think going into this season, it's nice to be optimistic. And But you have to be realistic that this was always probably going to be Daniel Jones's last year in New York. It's just, I didn't think it was going to be this ugly. <laughs> like, like that game was really hard to watch. And that's coming from, you know, fans that watched week one last year, that watched the Glennon and Fromm years, that watched the third and nine. Like we we have seen ugly games. That one was really painful because it it just looked like he he just gave like he doesn't even know what he's doing. It's it's actually kind of sad. Like there's no confidence left in him and there's really no hope for him in New York, honestly. No, I agree. It's it was a tough watch. I I kind of stopped watching at some I point because it was yeah. like it's not. I'm not enjoying myself anymore. Like this no. is not yeah. a fun time at all. No, not fun. Steffi, do you think that he could possibly have a resurgence as a backup quarterback in the future for another team? Kind of like maybe what we saw with the Geno Smith a couple years ago. Yeah, I do. Honestly, I think. Um, like, I don't think teams are going to be completely out on him. I think, you know, you uh, we can sit here and make all the excuses you want for mm-hmm. Daniel. Like, at the end of the day, it's Daniel. Um, but, you know, he wasn't given the best cards either in New York. Um, they put him behind a horrible line. They changed the staff. Some of the worst staffs that we've seen personally, I think, in the NFL history. Um, but, yeah, I think that he could go to another team. And if – they're able to pull that confidence out and he doesn't have the pressure on him, you know, almost like, I mean, not as good as Baker, but like what we saw even Baker bop around to a couple teams, finally land on Tampa after being with Carolina and the Rams. And yeah, maybe he does get another shot because I do think that raw talent is there. It's just, he was never given the opportunity and it's too long now. Like we're done. Like we can't, this is it. Like we gotta, it's been too much. We've invested too much time. Um, wasted too much stock on other guys that we maybe could have invested in. So, yeah, I think he could end up, you know, going somewhere. And, you know, I, I think he's a really – he's probably a really good backup in the league right now um, when he doesn't have the pressure and he doesn't have to play 17 weeks, maybe in a better system. I don't know. It's just – it's not working. Like, I think Dable's got to develop his own guy and we got to move on. It's sad because, I, you know, I rooted for him for a very long time, but – enough is enough like I just that was really painful like they and that team made freaking Sam Darnold look like Drew Brees out there like it was just it was so painful to watch yeah no, I think I think it's kind of his destiny at this point right like that yeah. backup slot is is kind of his and I mean we saw someone like Nick Foles Nick Foles backup quarterback showed up won a Super right. Bowl 
Yeah. But you put him in a starting position, he completely falls apart and gets yeah. replaced by Gardner Minshew in Jacksonville, you know? So yeah. it's it seems like that's kind of the yeah. destiny that he's – he's bound to have. And listen, but. he's rich. I don't feel that bad for him. Yeah. He's going to be okay. He has a Duke degree. He's a handsome right. dude. He's has good manners. He has his head on his shoulders. Like this kid's going to be fine. He got thrown. He should have, he's, he's playing quarterback, like a guy that went to Duke and got drafted six overall that shouldn't have been drafted six overall. And then went into a bad system. Like he is exactly what, what you should have expected out of him almost. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, always have a soft spot for him, but 100% agree. It's time to move on. Yeah, um, it's sad. It's, it's been time, but there we go. He he's still a leader, even if he doesn't have to start. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen in the coming weeks? And just want to quickly shout out. I have to sort of do the talk of shame here. Uh, Larry's girlfriend did beat me in fantasy this week in our uh, work Yikes. league. Yikes! Yes. <laughs> so I have to shout him out. Uh, Cowboys fan too, so I have to. Oh man, double whammy there! I gotta put my money where my mouth is and own up to it. You know? um, but week two, let's get to a softer oh, note. God, it's only week two. <laughs> I know. Despite oh, everything we just said, Jones is still the starting quarterback, and yep. obviously he wasn't alone in looking bad last week. I mean, the no. pass rush was not there. I mean, the Vikings had good tackles on the perimeter of the line, but interior-wise, Ed Ingram's a, a below-average guard, right? And you're going into Washington. Their tackles are not very good. It's Andrew Wiley, who was a swing tackle for the Chiefs. And then I believe the other one is Brandon Coleman. I think it was Charles Leno last year who got replaced by Coleman, who's a former day three pick, a veteran now. And I think Burns and Thibodeau are going to feast in this game. Um, I I don't know if that's going to lead to a win or not, but I kind of want both of your takes on that because the edge rush was missing in week one, right? So Thibodeau has really succeeded against the commanders in four career games. I think he has like five and a half sacks. So I'm expecting a big game from those two edge rushers this week. Yeah, absolutely. I think too, um, you know, and probably not the right time to talk about, but we're going to have to start having a conversation about Kayvon pretty soon because um the uh spike weeks and then completely disappearing like you're not on the roster is kind of starting to get old and I love him and he like I am so happy he's on this team but at the same time like we kind of need to start seeing a little bit more consistency out of him especially as we start approaching like him wanting to get paid because right now he's not someone I would pay if I'm the GM um I, I think you know you look at this Washington team the secondary is not good the O-line is not good. Um, you saw Baker throw for almost 300 yards. You saw three different wide receivers. Rashad White even got in there for some action. Like, there is no reason. If this Giants team is actually as bad as it looked last week, and this game also goes that poorly, like, I probably will not watch another game. Because this is the a perfect opportunity to at least give us a watchable game. Um, with the weapons that they have, we have to see a pass rush. Um, you got to get some pressure on Daniels again to make make some mistakes. That shouldn't be an issue um, at, against this O line. And then you know, just throw the ball. Like I, you know, and I'm so sick of saying that. And I'm sure you guys feel the same way after watching this team. For just throw the ball. Like I, I, I truly don't understand. And it's so funny they went away from things like when Danny did throw that that pick six. It's like. <laughs> For so many years, you guys would never throw the ball at the goal line. And then you decide in that moment, while he's having a horrible game, that we're going to throw the ball after you haven't done it. Like, what? I just don't – the thought process wasn't there for me. I think they probably feel the heat, and they have to turn it around. Like, if this is another blowout, there's a – I've been on, in the camp that Dable – and Shane's seats are not hot. Like, I don't think that's happening. I don't think they're losing their jobs after this year. If this game goes bad, I might change my stance on that. No, I, I would agree with that because I was the same. I was, <clears throat> like, not expecting Dable or Shane to be losing their jobs at any point. You know, Daniel Jones is kind of like that first step to, right. you know, move him out of it. And then if they start to improve, if they don't, then obviously there's a lot of different issues we got going on here. But right. I – definitely would like that's what I was saying before I was like why are we not seeing Malik neighbors like 
be a star right now? Like, why mm-hmm. did we not put the ball in his hands last week? Like, yeah. maybe if we did that, we might not be having this conversation about Daniel Jones. Like, maybe we'd be like, ah, he could he could get there. You know, we'll get yeah. the ball into the, the receiver's hand and, and we could deal with it. But I just I, – I want to see Malik Neighbors be an absolute beast, and I did not see that. So if we can – freaking throw the ball that would be phenomenal and uh, like yeah Washington is it it's you know it's a divisional game we should be able to beat them at least one time it'd be great to have a a bit of a resurgence week two but yeah you're five one and one against this team Danny if your confidence is going to come from anywhere it's it is in this matchup if this game looks like looks very bad like I'm benching Danny for week three like I'm done like that's that's it like he he really like. There's no reason for this game to go poorly. I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I completely agree. And just to quickly um, pivot to from that mm-hmm. point you mentioned about Dable and Shane, I also agree. I think Dable should get the chance to get his own quarterback because he did inherit Daniel Jones as much as we might like the guy off mm-hmm. the field. Um, he needs that chance, and this week has to be the last straw, in my opinion. Um, yeah. Jaden Daniels, rookie quarterback. He didn't lose any fumbles last week, but he did cough the ball up three times. You know, the ball went loose. Mm-hmm. Their O line is not great. They overpaid for an average center in free agency and by a Daz. And the biggest thing for me is Jaden's a rushing threat right now. We yeah. know he has a good arm, but Scary Terry only had two catches last week against Tampa Bay. Um, you know, Banks and McLaurin is going to be a huge matchup. So I think the, the defense is really going to have to keep the Giants in this game, and they're going to have to find a way to get Malik Neighbors the ball. I read a stat, too. Last week he had just under four yards on average of separation. That was eighth best among NFL wide receivers. So Neighbors, five catches, 66 yards. He could have done so much more if he had competent quarterback play that could get him the football. His first catch in the NFL was a 25 yard bot. Like what? I don't understand why we just decided that we were just not going to keep doing that. It's, it's crazy to me. Wandell is other, another piece. Like I want to see them continue to get him heavily involved. Um, I, yeah, I don't, it's so, it's so head scratching. Like that game was, you know, that's the most like speechless I've been from the giants, which again, like is saying a lot, but this defense needs, yeah, they need to get involved. I mean, you can look at what Minnesota did and I'm not going to diminish like that win for them, but like you look at the stats on paper and like, it's not that impressive. Like it really is not what they did is not impressive. They held Justin Jefferson to under 60 yards. Um, Jordan Addison for under 40, uh, Aaron Jones was the highlight there, but we know that's kind of been our deal for a while. Like we let teams run all over us still for under a hundred. I mean, that's better than what we're kind of used to. So, and I, I think those wide receivers are, are, I don't want to say much more talented because it sounds rude, but like they're a, a different level to me than, you know, the guys that are on Washington. Like, I just think this team has no excuses this week. Like I can't. I'm not going to sit there and watch that again. Like that TV is going to go off so fast. I promise you guys. <laughs> I was like just thinking about like, just thinking about the last time I felt like very, very happy watching a Giants game. And I'm pretty sure it was when they played the Packers last year and Tommy DeVito started oh. and he made like that just amazing winning drive down the field. And he, he threw like a bomb to Wandale Robinson. And I was like, Whoa, we can do that. Like, I just want to see a, re- a receiving touchdown. Like, is that like so hard to ask for? Like, just one. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, I just, I just want to see someone throw the ball and have a yeah. receiver catch it and have it be so beautiful and just run into the end zone. It's like yeah. that, and and it's almost like I forget what that's like. I'm watching other teams do it. I know Naturally. it's possible. You watch other teams too, and it's like it looks so easy. Like, why does it look so clunky when we play football? Why does it look like they're playing in a different league than everyone else? It drives me crazy. I also did, again, like, I didn't think Minnesota looked that great. Like, I think they probably get humbled this week against the 49ers. Um, But yeah, it's just like, enough is enough with this team. Like, again, and also knock on wood, I'll probably regret saying this, but like, you guys are healthy. Like, this is the first time in a while that we're healthy. Uh, you have everything you need on this team. Like, what else, What is it going to take? So it, it's it's Danny now. Like, now it is very obviously Danny. Agreed. What's up, Cole G? Appreciate the comment. And Adam says, 
Daves is not the problem. He's made big changes to this team, and just some players aren't performing. When you have one of the best O lines in the league, can you disagree? I wouldn't call them one of the best just yet. Uh, I, I think they're average right now. They're, they're they're still gelling. They haven't had a whole lot of time together. They're the veterans now. The penalties the penalty. too. Undisciplined. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. if I'm gonna knock Daves for anything, like it, they just look very undisciplined. Like why are we still having too too many men in the huddle? Like what? I just don't want. Like that's. It's enough. Like, I, I don't understand what's going on. Those are very simple things that need to be cleaned up. Like, the amount of flags, what are you guys doing? Like, I just don't, I don't understand. It's so frustrating. The too many men in the huddle. Really? What are you doing? Like, I just don't understand. Like, get off the field. And they're all looking at each other like, oh, me? So, and you're just like, going to go off? And then there are two of them are sprinting. Like, it's going to freaking help. Oh, my God. It's um, just so bad. Really, really bad. Uh, Sam, what's your first key to beating Washington? This is the team we have to beat. I have mine. What's yours? How are the Giants getting back to one one They haven't lost to Washington since 2021, actually, because 2022 they won and then they tied, and then 23 they swept. Mm. It's been a long time. I'm, I'm going to say it sounds like so simplistic, but, like, get points on the board. Like, yeah. get get the ball down the field, utilize your offense in a great, you know, okay, yeah, we don't have to throw an 80-yard bomb down the field to to uh, Malik Neighbors, but, like, nickel and dime them. Get five yards here, get 10 yards here, you know, utilize it. And I know Devin Singletary is not a star running back, but he's not bad. He's not a bad running back by any stretch of the mean. So, like, get the ball in his hands, nickel and dime them down the field, you know, utilize their vulnerabilities to the way that we can – score points because if we go through another week without scoring a touchdown and go into week three with not a single touchdown listed for this team yet like oh my gosh it's a, that's gonna be a huge 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 issue oh my gosh yeah i can't i can't even like imagine going through watching another game without like, yeah, <laughs> so bad and singletary's not bad like you said the saying, giants yeah. got themselves into a negative game script where they couldn't run the football People are like, oh, he had 10 rushes for 37 yards. Did you watch the game? They were barely able to give him the ball in the second half. They couldn't establish anything. No, nothing was established. There was nothing, nothing no. was going on. It just didn't, it was all over the place. Like, and they have to like come out of the gate hot. Like what, just come out of the gate, throw the ball, like assert some form of dominance for once. Like stop acting like the Giants in the way like all these teams talk about you, all these coaches talk about you, all these players talk about you. Like this team just, they need a win so bad and like a good win, like a good true team win. They need that terribly or we're in for probably like a one in six, like a horrible season is what we're in for. I'm thinking about Germany. Oh, yeah. I canceled my flight. I'm not going there. Like I, I, I canceled my flight. I canceled my trip. I'm not going to Germany to watch that team. You were going to go? Yeah, I had I canceled my plane ticket. Whoa. I'm not going. You. There's you. no way I'm going to Germany because by the slight chance, because I do think we're a better team than if the Panthers beat us and I went to Germany, yeah, I would maybe be looking at finding a new fan. <laughs> that would probably be uh, it for me. <laughs> and the flight back. <laughs> mm -mm. That'd be rough. Adam says, yikes. Yep. Yeah, horrible. Um, so... Steffi, would you say getting off to a fast start is your key, or is there anything else on top of that that you think they have to do, maybe defensively on that side of the ball? Yeah, I mean, can we see the pass rush that is cost us a lot of money and is supposed to be very, very good and one of the best in the leagues? Because I didn't see that last week. Um, I think you take advantage of this commander's O-line that does not look good, make Daniels uncomfortable. Um and like, again, like attack them where they're weak. They're weak in their secondary and they're weak in their O-line. So find those holes and, and actually try to do something with it. And Daniel, don't turn the ball over. Like <laughs> uh, at least not more than once and <laughs> can it not lead to points for the other team. You know, like you gotta clean it up. Totally. I'm also saying too, on top of that, I mentioned that before as a key to pass rush and if you're going to get any good quarterback play out of Jones, you have to protect him. Yeah. Uh, last week, 
Andrew Thomas gave up nothing. Runyon gave up a sack, but other than that, he was very good. Yeah. JMS, not bad. Greg Van Roten, probably the worst lineman we have. And actually, last year, he might have been the best lineman outside of Andrew Thomas. <laughs> yeah, you have, a point. you have a point. And then Il Illuminor, he's been really, really good yeah. so far, um, yeah. even in preseason. Yeah. So that's key for me. Uh, Steelers fan, go Pittsburgh. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you, buddy. Yeah, it's really just Daniel, I think, to be honest. Like, Daniel in the pass rush, I think it comes down to just it's as simple as that. It's going to be super visible when – I'm saying when because it's probably going to happen. He gets benched. And either yeah. Drew Locke or Tommy comes in, and they can get the ball in the receiver's hands and pass the ball off to a, receiver, uh, to a running yeah. back. Like, that's when it's going to be completely transparent. And it's very obvious Dable doesn't trust him. Like, I think that's very – like, it, this has been very evident, for especially since last year. Like, they immediately they put Ty, like Tyrod or uh, Cutlets in, and they're throwing the ball downfield. Like, but back – you know, people forget this now, but a couple of years ago, all people would talk about if they were to compliment Daniel Jones is his deep ball. Mm -hmm. yet, yet we weren't seeing any of that. They weren't even trusting him to do that. So – You've taken away the one thing that he used to be good at. I don't know. Hopefully that's still in him somewhere. But uh, right. Dable's got to let – I almost would rather see shots down the field and those get picked off, to be honest, than whatever we're doing right now. Like, I want to see them at least give him the opportunity to throw the ball. I agree. And where was Jalen Hyatt? Nowhere. With what's Slayton. Yeah, what's up with that? And then did was it Dable that said he's like the third, four, fourth receiver on the roster? Like, what was he saying? And I don't listen to a lot of stuff. I have a lot of it muted because I it no. starts to drive me crazy. But what is that about? And why are we saying that out loud? <laughs> I don't know. But now with Slayton and concussion protocol, Hyatt's going to have to get an uptick in snaps this week. Yeah. Wandell got targeted 12 times last week, only caught six balls because Jones was missing them left and right. Malik had five catches, and then Hyatt was maybe targeted once. So he's deep ball is Daniel's strength. Dable clearly draft him and Shane drafted Jalen Hyatt for Daniel Jones. Yeah, I don't understand keep the deep ball, and he can't. He can't. That's why they got to go. Starting to him. feel like they're drafting and very much planning for like not this year. Like it's and it's it's annoying because can you at least try to win? Like I get that we're looking forward, but. It's starting to just get like obnoxious. Like you're not putting like your best foot forward, in my opinion. Like I, I get what you're doing, and like I see, I kind of see the vision. Like I somewhat, um, it's a little hazy. But like Daniel Jones is still your quarterback right now. Mm -hmm. You guys showed us to pay him. Like even in Hard Knocks, like Dable didn't speak up, and when they were sitting in that room talking about quarterbacks, so like obviously the the bigger vision, the bigger picture here is Dable and Shane keep their jobs and they handpick whoever they want in this next class. Unless the Maras are crazy and they're trying to get Arch and the, the whole conspiracy that way because I could totally see that happening. Um, but like, I get it. You're, we're planning for the future. This isn't like a win now team. Got it. Cool. Um, but we have to get through a season and it's we're going into week two um, and whatever you're doing right now is really not working. <laughs> Carson Beck, 2025. I'm hoping for it. I can't even, like, I can't even do it. I'm like, I cannot believe we're back here. Like, I knew it was going to happen, but it's so crazy. Like, during that game, I'm like, all right, on to the draft. Let's get That's it started. Draft. Guess I'm uh, really honing in on college football this year. Yeah. Uh, but it sucks like that. And and then there's the anxiety of, like, okay, well, how great have our uh, – our round one picks really turned out to be the last couple of years because are we sure that's even going to work? <laughs> Burns and Tibbs were on a milk carton this past game. Yeah. Agree. Carson Burns had like one good play and that was like about all we saw from him. What up, Nick Tonks, uh, Jacksonville native, big Giants fan and flies airplanes for a living. Thank you, oh, Nick, God. for commenting. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully you're doing your job. Just kidding. <laughs> he also beat me in fantasy this week in my other league by 0.6 points. Oh, that's the worst. The worst. So, I yeah. really I really don't know if I if I can do another Manning. I, I don't know. It, it's it's tough. 
Like it's also he's not, you know, it's not like Arch is starting. He's yeah. like the nation's favorite backup quarterback right now. I just want them to take whoever. I don't care. Take the consensus QB one at pick two and be done with it. Like, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Just get a quarterback, let Dable like do his thing. Cause then you can decide if it's Dable, then you get rid of Dable, bring someone else in and you still have the quarterback and you're not wasting years. Like we, we keep doing. So yeah, I don't know. I, we need a new quarterback and it's a shame that we have to sit through another freaking season of this. Yeah. Agreed. And then quickly, before we make our game predictions, just a couple players to watch for each team. Um, Washington specifically, they added Austin Eckler, who I think is a very dynamic pass catching back, yeah. you know, 50 receiving yards last week. He's really, really good. And the Giants have issues with pass catching backs. So Washington has sort of changed their identity. You know, last year it was Sam Howell and Brian Robinson Jr. A lot of eye formation um, and classic shotgun when they were getting into third and long and Howell was throwing erratic passes. Now you have a mobile quarterback in Jaden Daniels, who is a rookie, sure, but you have two quality backs. That's a three-headed monster in the backfield, if you're asking me. Which we should be able to contain, though. So it's like, <laughs> is that pass, or like, is that going to show up where we can contain that? Like, I do think we have the ability to do that, but it's just like, who's going to show up on any given day? That's the problem. True, true. Yeah. What do you say, Sam? In terms of players to watch, gosh. Um, for for Washington, I mean, yeah. Brian Robinson is somebody who's going to be like a solid running back forever, and they have this dual threat of him and Eckler now. So definitely got to keep an eye on that, especially just because of Aaron Jones being the best player basically from the Vikings last year, uh, last week. Um I, and and Jaden Daniels is like we just have to focus on this run game, right? Like Jaden Daniels is rushing all over the place, so it seems like yeah. that's that's what we have to hone in on here, um, because it's uh, you know Jaden Daniels is still trying to figure out when he's throwing and when he's running, and it seems like he's relying more on himself right now, so he's running yeah. more often. Um, but yeah, I think those guys are definitely I guess yeah, just the run game in general. Anybody who's going to be running is is probably the guys that we got to keep an eye on. Steffi, does anybody else stand out on Washington for you specifically? Um, no, I think you guys nailed it there. I think Jaden's really a big piece. Eckler as well, it's a really good point because Aaron Jones really did like he looked very, very flashy from a player, you know, outside of his last three games last year. Um, for a guy that, you know, there's rumblings of being washed, like that man did not look washed to me. Um, so I think Eckler, you know, they're going to get him in the receiving game. And then Jaden Daniels, I mean, listen, it's still a rookie. He had 88 yards on the, on the ground last week. Um, so that's a problem alone. So I think if, you know, if, if we can contain him, keep an eye on him. I'm not so much worried, which famous last words about their wide receivers. Um, and maybe that's foolish of me. But I think I thought our secondary actually looked – like, I know it's not good, but I did think, like, it looked kind of promising. Like, there was certain moments where I was like, that's not horrible. Like, that was kind of okay. Um, and I know that's not saying a lot, but, you know, this wide receiver room doesn't, like, do anything crazy for me. So, yeah, I think it's really the running game. Like, you got to control that. Make them throw the ball. Make them throw the ball. It's Scary Terry, Luke McCaffrey, Christian's younger brother, and yeah. then – Noah Brown. That doesn't scare me at all. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. And I think the only thing that really makes me a little uneasy is Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne up the middle. They've been yeah. two first round DTs for years up there, you know, going up against a second year center and John Michael Schmitz and, you know, John Runyon Jr., who we brought in to be a pass blocking guard. He's solid. So hopefully having him rather than a guy like Azudu or McKeithen in previous years could help offset that. And ultimately Baker Mayfield did throw four touchdowns against the commanders last mm -hmm. week. So Daniel Jones, can you at least throw two? 
Is that asking too much? That's a little much, Tom. I think we, I, I think we gotta at least just get the one first. Just to can make we just sure get the media a little bit off our back? Like, just throw a cup. Like, throw one, throw two. Like, one uh, rushing. Like, something yeah. to get them off our back because it's it's truly unbearable. Um, and I don't think this team is as bad as they displayed week one. I agree. Uh, Sam Hartman was also a commander. Sam <laughs> on the fifty-three now. My angel. Amazing. Love oh, him. Forever. Uh, Beautiful man. It's hard for him to even throw a five yard out. <laughs> we know. <laughs> Bill Belichick. Know. Too old. <laughs> Not happening. Bill Belichick is, he's like doing Manning cast now and has no, like a 23 year old. And life. I don't want anyone from the Belichick tree. Like, I'm done. I, I think I'd rather go a different direction. Like, give me someone yeah. from like Shanahan, Kubiak, like more yeah, down that really route good. instead of, I think we're, I think we should just like, close the door on uh, the Belichick tree if this does come to an end. Definitely. So we were talking about, you know, corners and receivers before, so we might see more of Hyatt this week, Slayton and concussion protocol. Olszewski is out for weeks, Sam. So the Giants signed Amir smith Marset to be the returner. I can't and like our, sure. uh, <laughs> our starting corner, Nick McLeod, is out. So... Great. Uh, yeah. Fine. Love that for us. So Adori, who's back, who, by the way, that PI call was BS last, was last week. Yeah. Bang, bang, contact. No, thank you, Adam. No. Appreciate the input. <laughs> I know. Let's get into our game prediction. So, <laughs> Steffi, we'll start with you as the guest. Um, who's winning? And if you have a final score, you can throw that in there, too. <sighs> I'm going to take the Giants. Oh, no. is My, my camera might be uh, going in now. Uh, I'm going to take the Giants because I refuse to accept what last week was, even though in my gut I think the commanders are winning. Um, I'll go 16-14, the New York Giants. And I think that probably involves a defensive touchdown, but it's okay. <laughs> I can see that happening 100%. I am not feeling as confident, unfortunately. I'm not confident. I'm just trying not to be not. (laughs) I I I feel like we always get so sad whenever if we ever have just like a full sweep of like not winning um on this show, but I am gonna go with the commanders here. Like I feel like the commanders are a lot stronger than we think that they are. I mean, I think someone is is Zach Ertz playing? Isn't Zach Ertz on the commanders? Yeah, I don't think they didn't even mention veteran rest day today. We got a couple uh Got a couple of receptions. Yeah, it's like, like you know, Zach Hurts, Austin Eckler, Terry McLaurin. Like th- this, this offense on paper is actually mm-hmm. seems pretty strong. Yeah. Um, so I think that they're going to put up quite a number of points here. I'm going to say 24 to 14 commanders. It sounds about right. And hopefully we get at least one passing and one rushing touchdown here. That would be cool. Devin Singletary, score a point. Please. Please. <laughs> Would love that. Um, I think Malik Neighbors is going to have a big game. I think Brian Burns and Kevon Thibodeau are going to have a big game. Those two combined for 19 and a half sacks last year on their respective teams. Tibbs with us and then Burns in Carolina. Um, four career games against Washington. Thibodeau has five and a half sacks. I think huge games are incoming for both of them. Um, Malik's going to do well. He'll see a lot of Benjamin St. Juiced. However, Something doesn't sit right with me. Yeah. I'm going Washington 20 to 13. I think we're going to be tied late, possibly even have the lead and blow it. Um, I don't like saying that, but usually when I pick the Giants to lose, they win. So (laughs) hopefully that's um, reverse fortune there. Kenneth has 24 10 Washington. Giants D scores TD. I could see it. Could Sound definitely great as well. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah, 2013. We don't, none of us have a lot of points. No. I think, it's Steph, you, you have the most. 16. Try my best. <laughs> last question. Yeah. Is this Jones's last start before getting benched? No, they're going to milk this. I say uh, no. Yeah, they're going to milk this. This is. Again, like there's been this like hovering cloud of just like looking, it's like the future is up here. So they're not going to go and bet, like 
they're going to wait a couple games because then what you put in cutlets and we win a couple games. That's the same thing that happened last year. So they don't want to be in that position to put yourself out of like a draft spot that you really need. So um, I don't think there's, I just don't see them pulling him out. Like, and they're going to stand their ground and be stubborn a little bit. Like you paid the guy. Uh, I mean, I think after hard knocks, the world was very aware of what was going on. So yeah, yeah, I don't think it's his last start. I think we see him Honestly, like I wouldn't be surprised if we see him like through week six. Like that wouldn't shock me, to be honest. It's going to be br- – unless it gets really bad. Like if there's a game that gets out of control, like say – I mean, they didn't even take him out of the Cowboys game week one last year. So it's like I don't I don't know with them. Um, I don't see them pulling him during a game. I think it will be a decision that's made prior to a game. I agree. Very fair. All right, Steffi, thank you. Yeah. So much for hopping on. Um, where can people find you and your work that you do? I know Sam said you have a big presence, media personality. Tell <laughs> people where they can find Steffi Smalls. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me on. I hope that <laughs> the next time I come on, we can have a happier conversation uh, <laughs> and hopefully we all can keep the game on this week. You can find me out across social media at Steffi Smalls with three L's. And then I have my own show, the Steffi Smalls show, YouTube, and then podcast form. And then I'm around. Everything I do is, you know, usually on Twitter. And then if not Instagram, the whole, you know, all the socials. And yeah, I appreciate you guys. Hopefully this weekend goes well for us. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much Steffi. Steffi. Yeah. Appreciate you. Have a good Bye. night, okay? Steffi Smalls, folks. Great guest. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun time, but I agree. I hope next time we, we talk to Steffi, we're on much better, much better terms in terms of what's happening in the New York Giants world, for sure. It's like... On these shows now, like this year, the fact that it's gotten this low after one week, it's hard to like come up with like entertaining segments to talk about, folks. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're going to do our best throughout the course of the season. It's definitely going to be brutal if the Giants don't turn things around. But, Sam, expect the unexpected, right? You know, we may see like a, a 21-10 victory this week. I would love to see that. I would love to see Daniel Jones play better. And to be honest, it's not like we're going through a gauntlet the first couple of weeks. Next week we have the Browns and the Browns are in a total mess right now. Um, there's a good chance Jameis Winston might be starting that game in week three. So I don't know what's going to happen. I, I would argue, Sam, the Browns are worse of a mess than we are for different reasons. Uh, yes and no. I mean, there's, he hasn't played well either. The, the Browns offense has not played well. Deshaun has played horrible. Aside from the off the field stuff, his performance has been horrendous. He looks really bad. He worked. He, yeah. And he, his salary is fully guaranteed. At least the Giants with Jones, there's an out after this year where you just have to eat up some dead money, but you'll save almost 20 million if you do release Daniel Jones after this season. So that could potentially be a win. And then I'm looking, Dallas, that's a loss at Seattle. Who knows who the – I mean, if they're good besides quarterback play there. I don't know, Sam. These next two weeks, they're both winnable games. I just – I don't know if I see it. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see how this weekend goes. We'll see how we fare against a divisional team, um, against a fairly new, you know, roster put together here. But I'm I'm not going to hold my breath. That's for sure. Absolutely. Um, any any final thoughts for the fans, Sam? Any words of wisdom? If you're a miserable Giants fan watching us tonight, heading into Sunday, anything optimistic you think they should be considering or just hope for the best? Um, maybe maybe watch a repeat Super Bowl to feel something again. Maybe feel a little happiness. Um, maybe watch some Tommy DeVito highlights. Get ready for the rest of the season. It'll be fun. We're all in this together. Yes. We (laughs) are all in this together. We will be back next week previewing the Browns game. We're very excited to do that. Um, We'll talk about Washington, see how that unfolds. And, yes, Sam, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for coming on. I love the Tommy Cutlets shirt reveal tonight. That was epic. 
Thank you. Uh, love that. And folks, appreciate you all in the comments section. And just a reminder, if you've been watching us tonight, you want to check out more of our content, there's our social media below on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. On behalf of Sam Cardona Norberg, I'm Tom Scavetta saying so long. You've been watching Big Blue Avenue here on Facebook Live and YouTube. And without further ado, folks, let's go Big Blue.